small companies will now cut staff and definitely will not employ additional staff. So if you, so apparently the rules are different if you've got five or less. If you've got six or more, then you pay more. So what do you think people are going to do? They're going to go, oh, let's see, we've got seven employees, we're going to sack two of them. And then that will put them back onto the, um, the, the welfare budget. So short-sighted, so idiotic, so socialist and completely useless. I think that would be uh, my summation of the budget. Let's find out what James Hill makes of it. James, very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. This morning we wake to uh, what we all could have told everybody, I suppose, yesterday, um, that the budget's sort of unravelling at a rate of knots. The markets don't like it, um, the farmers don't like it, small business doesn't like it, the normal working persons don't like it. I don't think anybody likes it, apart from the sort of apparatchiks inside of Downing Street. Yeah, I'm probably within the Labour Party as well. Look, I mean, this budget had to appeal to three groups of people. It had to appeal to MPs in Parliament, markets outside it, and then the voters in the wider country. And mm. the last two are particularly troubling right now. I think inside the Treasury, they're all focusing on the market reaction, what's going on. Uh, it seems that the financial markets have reacted uh, to this budget, uh, suggesting it's one of the worst they've ever seen, apart from the mini-budget in recent years. <laughs> right. uh, it means that the pound is now I think weaker. it's worse than anything Liz Truss came up with, to be fair. Uh, I think that the rate is going at, so technically, is, is less dramatic than what she was doing. I mean, we can argue about the rights and wrongs and what happened, but in terms of just the raw data about economic figures and talking to you know, civil servants, this is just what the market is showing, is that it's simply more dramatic than anything we've seen apart from that. Um, and I think that, you know, the line that Tory MPs are now using, of course, is that they've now spent £110 billion uh, and they've got to killed off Grace prospects as a result of that. So yeah. they're spending a lot of money and someone said they're doing a reverse trust, if you will. Well, exactly right. I've got this from uh, Carl in Berry. I'm a mortgage broker. Since the budget, nine lenders have put their rates up. The reason being the swap rates financial institutions use to assess risk have gone up. Rachel Reeves is going to collapse the economy. You know, and, and I mean, that's the level at which, you know, most people have kind of contact with the markets. You know, most people don't have stocks and shares. Most people don't, you know, speculate on foreign currency or anything like that or, you know, f f orange juice futures. But what they do know is what their mortgage rate is going to look like. And mortgage rates are going up, which tells you that people don't trust Rachel Reeves with the economy. Yeah, and also that they just don't buy Rachel Reeves' economic plan. You know, there's all this talk beforehand of listening to the markets about wealth creation being the number one priority of this government. And yet, of course, they've just seen a huge spending splurge. And given the kind of sense of where the UK economy is going, given our historic underperformance, they just don't buy the credibility of her. So I think it's a really, really nervous time for them. I think the next few days could make or break the government in the medium term. Right. And meanwhile, I mean, the front page of the, t of the mail is, 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 is another sort of aspect of it, which we never really thought about. Charities last night were warning that they face dire consequences following a £1.4 billion budget raid. They're going to be forced to act services, lay off staff and even shut down as a result. I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't be too worried about charities, but I mean, it's quite a big part of the economy. It's quite a big a part of the, um, uh, of the financial sector. They do employ an awful lot of people, um, but if they're going to have to pay more money because of the way the government is now structuring national insurance, obviously less money is going to go to the good causes. Yeah, and of course it's especially egregious because the money that uh, is going to be levelled from the mixed rise on the public sector is going to be returned via a mechanism. So you have the public sector, pieces like the NHS, uh, you know, all our services are going to be insulated from that rise at the same time that charities, as you say, some of which are very good and uh, some of which are very overpaid, but you know, the point is people are putting long in hours in some of those are going to be the ones forced to cough up for it. Mm. So really not what they want. And of course, you know, if you think about Labour MPs and their priorities, you know, charities are definitely not one of the things they want to put money on. Um, they want to go after private schools and private jets. They don't want to go after nice, cuddly charities. Well, that's right. And But of course, the problem is, is that because they haven't really thought about it, and it really seems to have been done, uh, on, despite the fact that they say they were prepared for government and they took months to actually get the budget out there, they've sort of done it on the back of a fag packet. They don't seem to have thought through the consequences. We're now being told that, you know, the public schools are probably going to sue over the VA AC raid. Farmers are probably going to sue over the way that their uh, inheritance rules have been changed. And there's pensioners groups who are also talking about suing uh, over the fact that, you know, you won't be able to now pass on your pension after your death to your uh, family. Yeah, and I think that the key challenge for this Labour government is that they talk the language of national renewal. They say we all need to make sacrifices. Uh, they use very harsh rhetoric when it comes to independent schools and the farming community. Yeah. You, know, you saw Steve Reid this week saying they've got to make do more with less. 
And I thought, you know, that was such a contrast to the way in which certain groups have money sort of handed out in a bowl. Yeah. So I think that that's going to be the challenge for them is trying to pretend to be, uh, you know, working for everyone. And when, of course, there are clearly going to be losers, as this budget has shown. So yeah. I don't I don't think anything will happen from the legal action, because I think that, you know, it would be very difficult for um, a sovereign government to be challenged in the courts in this way. But I do think there's a lot of unintended consequences, and clearly their plans aren't going to raise as much revenue as they thought. Yes, indeed. But, you know, what it's like, though, James. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to get to court for it to be a big story. It doesn't have to get to court for it to be a, a, a comment, uh, a, a central kind of uh, idea where loads of people start talking about it and every yeah. time they, any Labour government turns up uh, a spokesman on any show, including mine, they're going to be asked about it and they won't like it. Uh, and if, if there is a legal challenge, it's news. It doesn't matter whether it goes anywhere. No, and no, true, of course. But I think also, you know, you can look at the last government and how much they had to spend their time on legal challenges, particularly in the Home Office. Yeah. Um, of course, that costs a lot of money. And again, all the kind of savings you say about uh, you know, the independent schools, for instance, that won't actually go into that. I think a lot of it will go on administration costs. You've also got to have exemptions from military families, for instance, you want to make refunds. So, I, as you say, Mike, when it is not, you, know, you have a public reaction from that, um, and it also means Labour MPs have to spend time, for instance, arguing why people with special needs uh, should have to be pay extra money on yeah. that. So it's not what they want, and it's not what the country votes Exactly. For. And it's a bad look. And let's look, let's watch, because this is a great example of what will happen to Keir Starmer wherever he mm. goes. This is last night, him being questioned by ITV. Prime Minister, your popularity has collapsed more significantly after winning an election than any other Prime Minister in modern history. Is that because you essentially misled the country during the election and you've raised taxes in a way that no one was expecting or voted for? I came into politics relatively late in life, having done other things. I came in with one purpose only, and that is to change lives for the better. We made key choices yesterday uh, in relation to the future of our country. So we choices that weren't in your manifesto. We, we, there, we, there was no suggestion of £40 billion pounds of tax rises in that manifesto, Prime We inherited a very badly damaged economy. Um, we audited the books and found £22 billion missing. We had to do the responsible thing, which is to stabilise the economy. He doesn't get it, does he? He just stands there, an automaton-like, like a robot, saying, I'm here to make your life better. Well, sorry, mate, you're making it worse. You know, it doesn't matter what you think you're doing, but what you are actually doing is making it worse. While uh, being in receipt of freebies from Lord Alley, some of which you've repaid, some of which you haven't, Angela Rayner this morning admitting that she uh, mistook, mistakenly uh, filed three and a half thousand quids worth of uh, clothing uh, as office uh, um, equipment. You know, I mean, the list goes on. They've got, they've appointed this guy David Goldstone, on the front page of the Telegraph today, um, as the chairman of the Office for Value for Money. Right, mm -hmm. who's wasted billions of pounds of public money in the past in his previous jobs, and who's now making the equivalent of two hundred forty-seven thousand pounds a year for working one day a week. I mean, this is the office for value of money, and of course, it really was an election gimmick. It was to get Labour through the election and saying, "Well, we're going to be really careful and scrutinise every penny and pound." And as we saw this week, you know, what's all that going to do when you're spending billions and billions on various issues that are close to you? And I mean, I know the Prime Minister obviously is going to say that uh, you know, they discovered more things were worse than they you know, they thought. I mean, first of all, they had two years to prepare. It's been obvious for two years Labour was going to win right. this election. They've had five years in opposition. And the second point, of course, Mike, is that actually. Um, you look at what they're choosing the money on, it's not just about servicing debt, etc. It's about choosing their own projects that they want to go on with. Yeah, exactly right. And still, the other story that won't go away um, is, of course, the uh, the Southport scenario. Uh, despite yeah. the fact that uh, Lindsay Hoyle in Parliament on Wednesday said, we don't want to talk about it, don't say anything about it, we're going to shut it all down. A uh, piece of the Telegraph today saying that Yvette Cooper, the Home Secretary, would have known within hours that the deadly toxin ricin had been recovered from the home of the suspect in the Southport killings. And that's coming from a counter-terror is an expert who knows about the timing of all this stuff and the government were very clear yesterday to point out that yes we heard about the charges in the last few weeks well that wasn't the question the question was when did you know about the information and that was obviously very quickly yes and i think the government has to be treading very carefully when it comes to this because i think there's a lot of anger from that heinous crime um, and i also think that as you say Mike, there are established procedures which everyone can know about yeah. without, without prejudice in the trial and i do think that Maybe right now there isn't the kind of groundswell of pressure within Westminster mm. from the Tories, but once that trial's concluded, big questions are going to be asked about what you could put. Well, you, put. you say mm. that, but funnily enough, I was talking to Kemi Badenoch yesterday. If she wins on Saturday, she is going to go full square up to Keir Starmer beginning on Monday, and she's going to start pummeling him and asking him to, for answers. So she's not going to be listening to Lindsay Hoyle, because we all know, James, you know, we understand contempt laws, we don't want to prejudice a trial. But so do MPs, and there's plenty of ways of asking questions about what happens subsequent to the actual event 
within the government circles? That's the question that people want answers to. It's not about the actual case. It's not about the suspect. It's not about the circumstances of the trial. It's about what happened in Downing Street after the information was given to them. Yeah, and I think that shows the kind of leadership that Kerry Bennett was going to have. And I thought it was really striking this week that when a reform MP, Richard Tice, tried to raise it, he yeah. accused. First of all, uh, Keir Starmer just didn't address the point that he made. No. And second of all, just turned it into an attack on Kemi and um, yeah. Robert Jedrick. And I yeah, think she that, wasn't I think, too happy about that, funnily enough. <laughs> no, uh, the camera cut to her. I think she was saying all sorts of things from yeah. across the dispatch box. But I think that, as you say, Mike, I mean, the fact that there is such public interest in this case means that they can't just keep on getting this line. Because I'm not sure how long that trial's going to last as well, in a mm. few months. Yeah, exactly right. Good to talk to you, James. Thanks very much indeed. James Hill, political correspondent at The Spectator.